Welcome to our Skills-Based Health On Demand series, brought to you by DESI, Missouri Healthy Schools, and MoShape. Today we are talking about the National Health Standard 6 Goal Setting. And I am Brad Brummel, Health and PE Coordinator for Springfield Public Schools. I'm joined by the fantastic Kim Goforth from Columbia Public Schools. Hi, Kim. Yes, hello, Brad, how are you today? I am doing excellent. Me and Kim are going to take you through standard six today, and we're going to hopefully by the end of the video, you'll you'll have these three learning objectives mastered. So you'll be able to explain the components of standard six. You'll be able to identify what mastery looks like, and y'all you'll be able to plan instruction and practice opportunities for a standard six performance indicator. And Kim is going to help by modeling these three learning objectives as well. So you're in good hands. I will try my best. We also have a training guide available for you, just like we do with all of our videos. So you can access this training guide um, by clicking in the description of your of the YouTube video, um, print, write, take your notes, or download and type in those um, fillable PDF boxes, whichever learning format you prefer. So also we have links to a lot of the resources. So the digital copy is still something that you'll want to save so that you can access all of the resources. Okay. Good point. Thank you, Brad. All right, let's dig in. So standard six is goal setting and the standard reads, students will demonstrate the ability to use goal setting skills to enhance health. And so goal setting is one of these um, skills and standards that I think um, as health and PE teachers, if you've been in that space, it partners very well with fitness testing. And so we've heard a lot about goal setting um, over the years. And so standard six is going to focus on using these skills to enhance health and health behavior. So as we tear apart this standard and dig a little bit deeper, every standard has its own goals and its own focus areas. And so the goal setting standard has three specific goals. This first goal talks about monitoring behavior and then finding those areas of health that are um, an area that people personally want to tackle and want to be better at. And so goal Goal number one, um, some examples, um, and I can relate to some of these, um, improving ability to cope with stress. I think that we've all had quite a year here dealing with COVID, and I think that's pretty real as we um, have navigated this year. And so goal, the first part here is to just identify where do we need to focus? Goal two of the goal setting standard talks about probably the most familiar and common thing that we associate here is creating a SMART goal. Um, not just what the letters mean, but really creating one that addresses that goal of um, goal number one, where do I need to target my um, SMART goal? And so some examples here, um, again, for the stress Number three, uh, for the next week, I'll check in with the school counselor about how I'm feeling, or that could be another trusted adult in the building and that kind of thing. So goal three of our standard, it talks about making that plan. Um, and I think in the past, we've used terms like action planning and things like that. So step three here is talking about planning um, and using different strategies to achieve that health goal that we wanted to focus on. And so again, some of the strategies, um, if we stick with our number three here, is asking for help. Um, again, in the COVID world, I think that's been um, a challenge for some folks if they've been dealing with stress, um, asking for help, but maybe it's connected us better with Zoom. We've had that ability maybe. Um, but those are um, the three main goals of this goal setting standard. Kim, I think in the past, goals two and goals three have been commonly done. Right. But I don't, I think goal one is an area of improvement for us as health educators, because so many times we tell our students what to create a SMART goal about, mm -hmm. and we don't give them the opportunity to really monitor their own health behaviors to see where a goal is needed. And so right. I love, I love goal one of this skill. Yeah, I agree. So as we reflect on any of our standards or any of our skills, we always want to come back and see and make a connection to our overall goals of health education. And I think it's easy for us to connect how the ability to set goals and monitor behaviors 
can help our students maintain healthy behaviors, address unhealthy behaviors, delay the risky behaviors, and to ultimately empower health literacy. Um, I mean, even from an adult standpoint, I'm reflecting on how setting some running goals recently have really improved my overall health. I know that in late April, I uh, I had been trying and trying to get below an eight minute mile pace for my five mile runs. Five miles is my sweet spot, Kim. Um, but I finally I finally got it at the end of April and I was super pumped. But then I realized I kind of stopped running for a little bit because I had met that goal. And so I needed a new goal. And so um, in May, I set a different goal and it's been awesome. I'm trying to run 100 miles in May. Oh my gosh. And I'm and I'm at 86. And so knowing where I'm at, monitoring and setting it from the get go has allowed me to be more active in May than I ever have. Um, and it's been during one of the craziest months of the year. So goal setting, uh, I think, plays a huge role in maintaining healthy behaviors. Absolutely. You're an inspiration, Brad. No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just trying to... Um, <laughs> Just trying to prevent the dad bod and the office bod from combining into something no one wants. No one wants. Oh my so, God. Good for you. <laughs> moving on to our training guide, we want you, the viewer, to make a connection to standard six, connect it to overall health goals, maybe your own health goals for your students. Um, but complete this opening activity on page one of your training guide by making a connection to the standard. Great. All right, let's take a look at the vertical grade level progression. So goal setting starts early, early, early. So pre-K to two, um, I want you to kind of look at the verbs here with me as we work through the grade spans. So pre-K two looks at setting a goal and working toward a very short-term goal. Um, it's probably gonna be within the, within the day for sure, if not by the time they leave school. So very, very short-term. Then we move into that upper elementary level. We're still setting a quality goal. And so I think there's gonna have to be some language around what's quality mean. We're not really digging into the smart steps of that, but we're talking about what a good goal is. Um, and then the layer that I find interesting here at 3.5 is to start tracking some progress. And I think that that's a powerful step um, in this skill progression, because like Brad was talking about his goals, um, if we, we are here on the 26th of May, and if he had this goal, but he never tracked his progress along the way, he wouldn't know how many miles he had um, on this late day of May. How many do you have? 14 left? Mm -hmm. Did I do that math right? All right. Yep, good so, math. Yep. So the tracking progress is going to come into play there at that upper elementary and then getting help when you need it. So um, Brad's going to um, enlist my help. He doesn't know this yet, but I'll text him uh, nightly to see where he is on his goal for May. But then we get into the secondary space with goal setting. And here is where they will be creating um, for the secondary space they're creating that SMART goal. So they're looking at the steps of a SMART goal based on an assessment that step one of looking at what are my personal behaviors um, that are causing me to be unhealthy or to continue my good healthy practices that I'm doing. So continuing some goals or recreating some. 9, 12 grade span, again, we're creating. And this takes a look at a little bit more long-term than the six, eight grade span. And so how can I carry my healthy behaviors into my um, post-secondary life, um, and then not just having one SMART goal, but multiple. And so all of these things that are achieving that longevity factor for the 9-12 grade span. So that's kind of the vertical progression of this skill for standard um, six, right? Six, yes. You got it. All right. So let's take a look at the performance indicators for each of the upper grade spans here. So when we look at these indicators, I want you to focus again on the verbs. And so that first indicator there that talks about assessing your personal practices, that's the one that Brad talked about that might go a little ignored in the past, but I think it's it's time to bring it to the forefront and, and give them something very relevant, um, something very personal to them. They have to know um, where they are. So assessing where they are with their current health practices across the health triangle, if you still use that model, the pillars of health. So letting them dig in and assess um, 
at the 6A grade span is, is very important. As we go through these indicators, um, developing a goal to adopt and maintain. Um, maintain is big. Um, like Brad mentioned, he had achieved one goal. So how do we then write a goal to maintain that level of his eight minute mile? Um, and then to improve the practice and then applying strategies and skills. I think um, in the past, we've done a great job with that um, as health educators and also describing how health goals can vary um, with changing ab abilities and priorities. I could never make a goal like Brad did. Um, no, thank you. Um, I'd rather do more when I'm yoga or something like that, making sure I get to yoga classes, but um, this girl's not gonna run um, 100 miles next month. So um, describing how those connections can be very personal at the six, eight grade span. And then if we jump to the nine, 12 grade spans, again, that first layer is assessing personal health. Um, and the only thing that is different there is that it partners with kind of the overall health status. And I think as kids mature, um, maybe take on jobs, um, play more important roles in their family or post-secondary options, they start to look at that overall health status. But again, as they work through these, um, developing a plan, um, the difference in verbs with implement strategies versus just applying strategies, I think looks a little bit different for this upper grade span. So implementing and then monitoring that progress is important again. Now this last indicator for 912, formulate an effective long-term plan. Um, keep that verb in mind when we talk about mastery, uh, which we are getting to um, quickly, but um, formulating an effective long-term plan um, it's, it's pretty extensive for these upper grades. So those are the difference in performance indicators focusing just on the verbs. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. So next is your opportunity to hit pause if you want, use the link on the training guide, access the performance indicators for standard six that are for your grade span um, and take some time to review those, explore those. And then we would love for you to pick one that you would like to do some planning for, dive a little deeper with, um, identify what mastery may look like, instruction and practice opportunities later on in this video. So take the time to review your grade span and select one performance indicator. So we love to use the backwards design as we dive deep into a standard um, or as we're planning for instruction. And so We've connected already with the goals of health education. That's where we want our students to get. But to get there, we have to use this backwards design to help us maximize our opportunities with our students. And so we're going to start by looking at the standards, which Kim just broke down beautifully with describing the vertical progression and the performance indicators. What comes next is assessments and mastery. And so Kim's going to talk to you with some examples of how we know when students have mastered the skills that we need them to master in order to obtain our goals of health education. Great. Um, I feel like goal settings tricky. You know, when we say, did you master your goal, Brad? So when I talk to him on June one and say, did you master your 100 miles? We, we can't think of it in that lens when we're dealing with students and their personal health goals. Um, it's a success for Brad, but maybe his planning process was all jumbled up. Um, maybe he, he tripped up along the way, didn't reach out for help, um, didn't access medical professionals if he got shin splints, what, whatever the case is. So all we can really do when we look at mastery is kind of chunk it into these different pieces on what kids can do and what we can assess. So it's not a success that I um, mastered my goal. It's more about the skill and the process. And so this is from the six, eight grade span on mastery. And so if you just look at, um, let's look at 6.8.3. So apply strategies and skills needed to attain a personal health goal. They're to do's. So the student friendly language that you'll be looking for is a student can identify action steps to reach their goal. So it doesn't matter what their goal is, but can they identify some steps that they need to check off the box along the way? And then on top of that, I can track my progress. So can a student track, be it daily or weekly, on achieving that um, attaining their personal health goals. So this is the to-do um, that is listed and RMC Health does a fantastic job breaking these performance indicators down. 
and then using some type of assessment tool because we can't go home with students to see if they are eating healthy, let's say, if that's their goal. And so these are some assessment tools um, to put in front of students to assess this particular standard. Um, the six, eight grade span one here that I've picked two goals, um, I wanna kind of draw your attention to the bottom one. Instead of having the, the worksheets that we have that put SMART down the one side and then students fill that in and they create their own goal, let them wrestle with someone else's goal. So if you provide them with goals that are already done, like I could take Brad's um, and and I, not that I would tear it apart, but I could watch his process on, okay, this is his goal and here's where he's trying to get. And so taking a step back a little bit to assess some goal um, that's already been done can be a powerful assessment tool to get there. So that is kind of the mastery look at this goal. So it's not based on, did you achieve your goal? It's more on how did you navigate the process? And it's always easier when you're learning or trying to master a skill for the first time, if it's somebody else or if you're doing it as a class um, before you're doing it for yourself and for your own yeah. health enhancing behavior so yeah, for sure. so now we would love for you to take that performance indicator that you selected and take the time to try to figure out what is it students will be doing to where you as a teacher will be able to determine where your students are have they mastered that skill are you going to have to differentiate your instruction? Are you going to have to spend more time? Do you need to spend less time? So what is it students will be doing? And also, what what is it students need to do? So you're going to you can do that. I can statement. You can describe the assessment tool that you're going to use. But pause the video and take the time to complete that in your training guide. So now that we move back to our backwards design and we've discussed and explored standards and now that we've discussed mastery next is what will our instruction look like what steps are we going to use to teach students these skills and what kind of practice opportunities are we going to give students so kim we're going to allow you to kind of dive into the steps next okay all right so kind of partnering that purple and yellow column together mm -hmm. um in when we plan our instruction as the teacher um RMC Health puts out these wonderful kind of step-by-step -step guidelines on how to get there based on our performance standards and the focus. And so this six, eight grade span has three steps. Um, and they don't spend a lot of time with that assessing own, their own personal health. I think that in that lower grade span, um, a, a little bit more coaching would have to be done there. But so if we just start with the first step of creating that SMART goal, um, it, they can get a pretty good idea of where they want to focus. Um, step two is to make a plan. And that's a little bit more of that action planning that um, we've talked about in the past. And then step three, I think, is another area that we don't allow a lot of time for, but I think is critical for um, really every skill that students are trying to, to embrace. And so that reflection piece comes in at step three to really um, go back and reflect. Do I need to set another one? Do I need to continue with this one and make a new plan? So that's the six, eight um, step by step teaching progression. Now the nine twelve does add that step one piece that's just called monitor behavior. And I've seen this played out a lot in the form of personal health assessments. Um, and they have so many online now. Um, some teachers have had their own from the past. They tie it to the health triangle a little bit with that conversation. And so monitoring the behavior to um, narrow the focus to then step two, create that SMART goal. And so that's a, a step one is not in the six, eight space, but I really think that these high school kids need to um, really be reflective before they get going to narrow their SMART goal. And then step three, making that long-term plan. And so six, eight was pretty short term, nine, 12 kids. Let's think about how this is gonna affect me for um, the long haul. And then again, that step four reflective piece, giving these, um, young adults a chance to reflect and come back to to make some mistakes, quite frankly, to, to kind of stumble along the way or to feel a lot of success to set another goal. And so that's the teaching progressions by step for each of these grade spans. Love these steps. Love these steps. A couple teaching tips that we wanted to talk about, and Kim's already mentioned this earlier. We don't want to assess 
the mastery of the health behavior itself, but we want to rather assess whether or not the students are ac accurately describing their health behaviors and drawing on these conclusions. We're mastering, we're, we're, we're assessing their strategies that they've been able to communicate or track. Um, again, not whether or not they've made the healthy choice or not. And then secondly, um, and Kim has mentioned this, but we want to spend more time building the skills, building their strategies for goal setting rather than memorizing the different components of SMART. Um, would it be helpful? Sure. But we, we want to make sure, remember, if you've checked out our why skills-based health education, we need that balance of one-thirds to two-thirds. And if we're not providing the time for them to practice the skills and, and reflect on the strategies used, then we're not setting them up for success. Perfect. All right, let's kind of navigate through some examples for um, planning an instructional, um, call it unit, call it setup, whatever you need to, a couple weeks here. So if I'm only going to focus on step three and four for the 912 grade span. And so remember step one, they've done their assessment. They've, they've really looked at themselves. They fine tune their, um, their growth area. Step two was that they actually wrote their smart goal. So they've, they've done our handout that looks pretty with all of our letters. And so they have done that. So step three is making that plan, making that action plan. And if you look at the performance indicators, one that I think um, it's a little bit of a predicting game, but when we talk about um, the guiding questions here and the performance indicators, what can stand in my way? What, what can be some barriers? Um, and I think that that has to come in play with the long-term planning addressing behaviors or barriers, um, making your steps, and then how am I going to monitor? I think that this step speaks to not only your planning, but um, what am I going to do when I stumble a little bit? And then how am I going to know that I'm stumbling? I have to have some type of tracking. And so that is the instructional piece. And so if we put a practice opportunity for just step three here, I see this playing out um, on the left. Students would make their own uh, poster or picture of here's my goal and here is my steps. And um, then the next phase of this, we would put students health goals around the room, um, making sure they're appropriate um, and around the room and doing a gallery walk of sorts where people mm -hmm. could come up read their action plan and say, hey, there's a barrier that might that you may not have known about. Like, oh, I, I know I see that your end date is, um, you know, for Brad's example, at the end of May. And hey, remember, it, you said you were going to do all this outside running. You don't have a treadmill at home. Um, and so it's going to thunderstorm um, the whole last week of May. So you may not get your steps in. And so having kids maybe post it, note it to say, have you thought about this? Or this might be a potential barrier or hey, there's this thing in the community that could be very helpful. So having a gallery walk and then when they come back and look through their action plan and take into considerations, do they need to edit? Do they need to revise some of their action planning um, or timeline? And so I think that giving kids a practice, like Brad had said, with someone else's goal, and then when they come back and say, oh gosh, when I look at mine, I didn't even think about that. Um, and so just getting other people's perspectives on that can help. So that's kind of the practice opportunity that could be married with step three. And then so that important piece then that comes in step four to actually reflect on it, um, reflect on did my monitoring go well? Did I actually meet my goal? How did it help me improve my health? Um, maybe they haven't had the opportunity since these are some long-term planning. Maybe they have remaining questions or they haven't got to it. So taking some reflective time in your planning, um, I think could be some of these guiding questions. But I think for the practice of students for step four can be um, reflective time. We've talked a lot um, in our sessions about journaling. And I think that whatever tracking methods that students choose for their goal um, it can be done in a journal. It can be done in a health journal. It can be done if if the goal is focused around healthy eating. There's a lot of food logs that can be um, used as well. But there's always 
there needs to be a place for this, these reflective questions. Um, and RMC Health puts language of health literacy comments in there. Um, and that could be journal prompts. It could be part of any type of tracking, goal tracking. Um, you know, maybe asking these questions weekly. How is my progress coming along? But I think giving kids opportunities to communicate what their goal was how they're doing through the action steps, and then circling back with some reflective practice has, is paramount to really achieving these goals. But that's the step four, you know, in the whole practice of um, goal setting. Yeah, one, one thing I would add, Ken, is I think, especially in a school setting, in a classroom setting, we have the opportunity to model this goal setting by setting a class or team goal. So. Mm -hmm. Like as a class, you could have a goal of um, limited amount of disruptions within a class period. And then you would be able to model the creation of strategies, barriers, how to monitor. You could have a goal related to classroom physical activity and whether or not we got enough minutes in that day. So I think you would have a great opportunity as a classroom teacher to model that with a team goal, which could also benefit your learning environment or the health of your students as well. Right, goal within a goal, that's awesome, yeah. So next we would invite you to choose, or to go back to that indicator that you chose, and what would your practice opportunities look like? What would your instructional planning look like? Um, complete these first two questions, and then question three, how will you know when your students have mastered the skill? So take the time just like Kim did with her examples and do that for the performance indicator that you selected on your training guide on page three. So we just wanted to highlight again that RMC Health Skill Guide. I know Kim um, mentioned several different things through her example, but as you are going through with your performance indicator, don't forget to access the RMC Skill Guide to see what is there to help you. Um, they're free and easy to access and linked on your training guide. Next, we just wanted to mention that goal setting is a great opportunity for those of us that teach health and PE to kind of make this a cross-curricular activity where you could easily use these goal setting skills within physical education. And if you are teaching both at the same time, what a great opportunity to embed these, these skills within both classroom settings. And so this is a great opportunity um, to kind of bring in your colleagues, if, if you have PE teachers in the building, to say, hey, this, is, this is what students are working on right now. Um, how could you use these skills within your PE setting? Or if you are doing both yourself, great opportunity to, to do that. And I think it's, I think you could also argue that goal setting could be used in a lot of these other um, content specific units as well. Don't you think, Kim? I, I totally agree. And I mentioned a little bit ago about healthy eating. I, I think that just mm -hmm. nutritionally, um, I think that's a huge one. And, and yeah. really personal health and wellness too. I think there's some mental health stuff that um, we could all get better on students as well. So yeah, all of that. I really could make a case for all of them. Yep. Yep. So last part of the training guide, um, please access the connections to content section on page three and make your own connection. How do you see this skill connecting to content in your space at your school with your students? Um, and, and pause the video and take a moment to do that. So we'll wrap up just by reminding you of the different videos that are available within this skills-based health on-demand sessions. Um, we've got the two intro videos, we've got the instructional strategy, strategy videos, and the eight national standards videos. Thank you for watching Goal Setting. Um, we are so excited to be exploring these standards with you, and we just are really thankful and appreciative that you checked out the video today. And a big thanks to Desi, Missouri Healthy Schools, and Moshe and my fabulous partner, Kim. Oh, thank you, Brad. Thanks, everybody.